There's a lot of cool new plastic coming for British forces in the Bulge British release for Flames of War. The one I'm excited to see again isn't new, the A-34 Comet. Comet is a cruiser tank similar to Cromwell, but with a newly designed 17-pounder gun. While still lightly armoured, Comet is fast and has a bigger punch. Coming late in 1944, Comet saw action in the last months of the war. British players will be happy to get access to this capable tank, the last of the cruiser tank line. Battlefront's Comet is a plastic kit that dates from 2014. Despite being an older kit, this is one of my favourite Battlefront kits to build. It just falls together. The kit I'm reviewing today comes from an older open firebox set of two tanks that's long out of production. However, the plastic will be the same as the new bulge release in the Comet Armoured Troop box set and the Comet Armoured Squadron starter box. The Cromwell fitted in well with the British cruiser tank doctrine which emphasised speed and mobility over armour protection. However, its 75mm gun did lack sufficient firepower against the thicker armour of Panthers and Tigers. As an expedient, the 17-pounder anti-tank gun was fitted to the Sherman Firefly and Challenger tanks. The gun was really too long and heavy for tank service and these expedient designs were only a stopgap produced in limited numbers until a better design became available. The A-34 Comet was essentially the Cromwell with a larger turret ring designed to take the new Vickers-designed high-velocity 3-inch tank gun. The new gun was shorter, lighter and smaller than the existing 17-pounder anti-tank gun. It mated the 17-pounder projectile with the shell casing of a 20 weight AA gun. The shorter, fatter round was easier to handle in a tank turret, as well as having better ballistic performance and accuracy over 700 yards. While it was a 17-pounder gun, the new tank gun was often called the Ordnance Quick-Firing 77mm HV to avoid confusion. Firing APCBC and later APDS rounds, the 77mm gun finally gave the British a tank gun that matched the Panther's 75mm. Like Cromwell, Comet had a crew of five men. Driver, hull machine gunner, gunner, loader and commander. Armour protection was only slightly more than Cromwell, with the tank still relying on speed for protection. That speed was provided by the 600 horsepower Rolls-Royce Meteor V12 petrol engine. The engine had so much power that speed limiters were fitted to prevent wear of the suspension and engine components. Comet also improved on Cromwell's suspension, strengthening it and adding track return rollers. A new, electrically traversed, welded turret housed the 77mm gun in a cast mantlet. Comet entered service in December 1944, however the second Fife and Forfer Yeomanry, the first unit to begin training on the new tank, were forced to retrieve their old Shermans and return to action for the Battle of the Bulge. The Comet saw action in the closing months of the war, but by war's end, only the second Fife and Forfers had fully equipped with the new type. Comet is the last of the cruiser tank line of British tanks. It continued in British service until 1958, including active service in Korea. It was also operated by several other nations, including South Africa, Finland, Burma and even Cuba. Let's look at the plastic. Comet comes on a single sprue broken into two frames. Mine is medium grey, but I'm guessing the new ones will be in the British medium green plastic. Parts are well cast and detail is plentiful and well defined. Parts count is pretty low, so it will be quick to assemble. There are no optional parts other than the open and closed commander's hatch. This first sprue section has the turret pieces as well as the upper hull. The turret is a slab-sided, multi-facet design. It's still pretty small, but wider than Cromwell to accommodate the wider turret ring. The upper piece here has ventilation and vision devices moulded on, as well as a closed loader's hatch and a hole for the commander's hatch. The lower turret piece is next to it. This fits up into a lip inside the upper turret piece. It is possible to put this in upside down, 
so remember the raised part of the hole for the turret peg needs to be inside the turret. The turret mantlet is a separate piece, with the contours of a canvas matlet cover moulded on. Note the hole for the 77mm gun barrel is keyed. This makes sure the muzzle brake is oriented correctly. The other piece here is the front plate for the hull. This has the armoured driver's hatch and the mount for the hull gunner's Beza machine gun. There are also prominent angled lifting rings on each side. These are meant to be here, don't trim them off. The upper hull is a single piece. There's plenty of detail on here with engine deck hatches, the gun cradle, engine vents, exhausts, tools and headlights, all moulded in strong relief. The small side skirts are moulded integral with the hull piece. That saves having to glue small fiddly skirt parts later on. A nice touch. The lack of exhausts in the rear hull piece indicates this is a wartime Type A Comet. The post-war Type B had fishtail exhausts in the rear plate that vented back and down. This kit has the wartime cowled exhausts that vent upwards through the back of the engine deck. The last piece on this section is the turret rear stowage box. This fits onto the rear of the turret, which has positioning ledges to aid in correct placement. The bottom of this part is open, but that won't be seen on the assembled kit. The two items mounted on the rear of this piece are British pattern methyl bromide fire extinguishers. These were painted red, orange or black, but were often overpainted in the vehicle colour of SCC 15 green or deep bronze green by their crews. So have fun with them. The second sprue section has the tracks and running gear, as well as the lower hull, beezer machine guns, gun barrel and other detail parts. The tracks are one piece parts. Each track part is keyed, so it can't be assembled the wrong way. The tracks differ from Cromwell tracks in having four return rollers per side. There's also five large road wheels on each side, with some nice bolt detail. Track detail is good becoming simplified where the track run isn't visible. The only issue with assembly of this kit comes with the tracks. The tolerances between the lower hull, tracks and upper hull and side skirts at the front is very tight. You might need to do some sanding here to get a good fit. I might suggest assembling the hull parts, then push in the track parts from below. Test and sand as necessary before you glue to get a good fit. Here's the lower hull. Again, you can see the differential keying for the tracks. The three small parts are the Beezer machine guns. You need one for the hull gunner's position on the front hull plate, and another coaxial with the main gun. And there's a spare for luck. The thin barrels can make these hard to cut free without bending or breaking. My technique is to grip the whole gun part under my thumb and forefinger and cut one side free. This means the pinched part is supported. Once the first side is cut, there's no bending pressure exerted for the second cut. The gun here is the 77mm HV tank gun. This tank gun is shorter than the 17 pounder anti-tank gun, but uses the same muzzle brake. The kit barrel is quite slender. Remember, this is an older kit, designed before Battlefront decided to go overscale on guns for durability. The gun in this kit is a bit more scale accurate, but nice and straight. Again, the end of the gun has keying to position it correctly in the mantlet. The remainder of the kit parts are the open and closed commander's hatches, a turret peg, searchlight, spare tracks and some stowage. I appear to have already nicked the stowage box off this sprue at some point. So those are all the kit parts for the Comet. Parts are well moulded with some good detail. As I said, this kit goes together well, with just some sanding at the join of hull and tracks at the front. Parts count is fairly low. While this is an older kit, Battlefront had already started gaining experience with plastic moulding wargaming kits. This shows in the integral side skirts and the keying of the tracks. Plus the sprue gates are much smaller than on their early kits. Only the slender gun barrel is any indication of this kit's age. So the plastic is good. How will Comet do on the table? Comet is a tank unit. Motivation is a confident 4+, with a protected ammo remount of 3+. This will make remounting bailed out tanks easier. Always nice. Skill is trained 4+. British manpower reserves were stretched by this stage of the war, 
but the losses of D-Day had been made good and the available replacements had been trained and integrated into these units by 1945. They're careful, hit on a 4+. Plus. Front armour is 7, side and rear is 5, and top is 1. As good as late war Shermans, but British doctrine still had cruiser tanks relying on speed. And speed they had. Even with the speed-limited engines, tactical move is 12 inches or 30 centimetres. Use this on the table to manoeuvre. Like all cruiser tanks, Comets aren't designed for static warfare. However, Cross is a 3+, plus. the tracks are still pretty narrow. The 77mm gun has a 36-inch or 90-centimetre range, with rate of fire 2 halted and 1 on the move. Anti-tank is 14, one less than the 17-pounder armed tanks, but still pretty good. Firepower is a 3+. Plus. The only special rule is smoke. The 77mm can fire smoke ammunition direct fire to blind the enemy. Note that the 77mm gun doesn't have the no HE rule. The 77mm gun had a serviceable HE shell and was effective against buildings and infantry. The Beza machine guns had a 16 inch range, rate of fire 4 with anti-tank of 2 and 6 firepower. So Comet isn't a world beater but it is a workmanlike and serviceable tank at this stage of the war. The Black Bull, the 11th Armoured Division, was the only division whose tank regiments had been fully equipped with Comets by war's end. The Bolt's British book includes a Comet Armoured Squadron list based on their organisation. The Squadron has a Comet Armoured Squadron HQ and up to four troops of Comets. One of the compulsory Comet troops can be swapped out for a Chaffee or Stuart Recce Patrol instead. The squadron can also field a second recce patrol, again with Chaffee or Stewarts, but with the added option of Dingo armoured cars. The last option is for an organic armoured AA troop, equipped with a pair of Crusader AA tanks. The squadron HQ also includes fire support with the option to take up to two 95mm howitzer armed Cromwell CS tanks. Comets come out at about 7 points each. That's the same points you'd pay for a Challenger or late Firefly, with Comet winning on armour and Challenger and Firefly having slightly better anti-tank. British Bulge gives British players the tools to battle German tanks like the Panther. However, these tanks will still have to ambush or manoeuvre for side shots on German heavies like Tiger II and Jag Tiger. While they're still glass cannons compared with German heavy armour, Comet, Firefly and Challenger are now available to British units in sufficient numbers. They're no longer just a single AT-14 or 15 gun in a troop, they're a troop of AT-14 or 15 guns. So that's the Battlefront Plastic Comet for British Bulge Forces in Flames of War. With Comet, Challenger and Firefly all now available in troop strength in late war lists, it's a toss-up. Certainly Comet is more affordable than it was in version 3, at only 7 points per tank you can easily form a Comet Armoured Squadron with several troops. Comet has a bit more protection, but the full 17 pounder gun on the others give just that little edge in anti-tank. As a British player it's nice to have this amount of choice. The Comet kit isn't new, but it's a great kit to build and ends up looking great. Parts engineering, mould sharpness and detail are all on par with Battlefront's current plastic kits. It's nice to have the Comet back, and the new lists in the Bulge book have fun options for how to use it. I'll wrap this up with a quick mention of the Comet Armoured Squadron Starter Force box being released with the Bulge British Wave. The range of new release plastic in this box is stunning. You get the Plastic Challenger, Comet, Chaffee and Cromwell tanks, as well as the Archer SP gun and the Ram Kangaroo kit which can also be built as Sexton SP artillery or even the Ram gun tank. There's even some infantry. When this becomes available, I'll certainly be grabbing one to feed the review queue for some time to come. I'm only sorry it doesn't come with the Land Mattress rocket launcher, or some Tulip rocket kits for Shermans. I hope you found this look at Comet and the upcoming Comet lists useful. Are you planning to field Comets? I am. But I also have a ton of Cromwells already, and I'm very excited for a plastic challenger. Let everyone know in the comments what you plan to build, and what lists you're most excited for. Thanks for watching, see you next time!